Hello world. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn how to get the assistant answer using the OpenAI Assistance API. There are two ways response polling and response streaming. I'll show you examples of both in both Python and Node.js. Before we start, I want to emphasize that the purpose of my tutorials is not that you code parallel to me. For this matter, I always upload the full code to my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Let's get to the point. The Assistance API is OpenAI's most complex API for sure, but I'll show you that using it is not that hard. First, let's cover what's the difference between response polling and response streaming. Response polling involves periodically checking for the availability of a response after a request is made. After the response is available, it's shown at once. On the other hand, response streaming allows response to be transmitted in real time as it becomes available after a request is made, providing a better UX. Now, let's look at the README file of this tutorial. OpenAI offers helpers for both response polling and response streaming, but I implemented a manual response polling before the helper was provided by OpenAI. I was thinking about whether to include the manual response polling example or not in this tutorial, but I decided to do it just to show you what happens in the background when you use the helper. So altogether, we have six scripts, three Python and three Node.js examples. Let's look at the code. I'll comment only on the three Python examples. I want to emphasize that the three Node.js examples follow the same logic. It's just the Node.js equivalent code. So we have a Python manual response polling example on the left, Python response polling with a helper example in the middle, and Python response streaming with a helper example on the right. We can hide these two for now. Let's look at the Python manual response polling example. At the top, we have imports. Next, we load environment variables from the env file. In the env file, we need to have at least one environment variable OpenAI Assistant ID. If we want to attach files to our assistant, we must also add the file ID or multiple file IDs as environment variables. In this case, I have the OpenAI Assistant ID and one file ID. Then we initialize the OpenAI client output formatter and variables. Following that, we get the assistant ID and all file IDs from the env file. It's important to name environment variables starting with OpenAI underscore assistant underscore ID for the assistant and OpenAI underscore file underscore ID underscore for the files. The code will pick up only environment variables named this way. After this, we set up a simple header and subheader that will be shown when we start the script. Proceeding, we show an error message if there's no assistant ID environment variable added in the env file. Next, we display the assistant's details. This is just to make UX better. Then we check for file ID environment variables. If there's no file ID environment variables in the env file, we ask the user if he or she is okay with no files attaching to the assistant. If there's at least one file ID and environment variable in the env file, we display the file's details and ask the user to add a tool to the file, which can be the code interpreter or the file search tool. After this, we display a table with all files and tools. Now we come to the part where the OpenAI Assistance API flow starts. Step one, create a new thread. Step two, get the user question and display it. If the user wants to quit the chat, break the while loop. Step three, add the user question to the thread messages. We have two possibilities. If there's no file ID environment variables in the env file, we don't set the attachments parameter. If there's at least one file ID and environment variable in the env file, we set the attachments parameter with files and their tools. Until step four, all three Python examples are identical. Step four and subsequent steps are the core of today's tutorial. In other words, the code from step four and onwards is different depending on if it's the manual response polling, response polling with a helper, or response streaming with a helper example. Let's continue with the Python manual response polling example. Step four, run the assistant. Step five, periodically retrieve the run to check its status. While we are waiting for the assistant answer, we want to show the loading spinner. For this, we use rich output formatter. Also, we set the initial delay before the first retrieval of the assistant answer just to give the assistant time to come up with the answer and not make too many API calls, which cost us money. Step six, if the run is completed, we hide the loading spinner and display the assistant answer. If after 15 seconds, the run is still not completed, we check for the run status every five seconds until the run is completed and the assistant answer is ready. Let's look at the Python response polling with a helper example. As I already mentioned, the code is identical until step four, so let's scroll down. 
Here we use the polling helper provided by OpenAI. Before we use the create method, now we use the create and poll method. A very nice thing is the poll interval MS parameter, where we set the polling interval. In our case, the code will check if the assistant answer is ready every five seconds. Before this was step four and step five. Now this is all done in step four. Step five, if the run is completed, we hide the loading spinner and display the assistant answer. Before this was step six. Let's look at the Python response streaming with a helper example. Again, the code is identical until step four, so let's scroll down. Here we use the streaming helper provided by OpenAI. Before we use the create method or create and pull method, now we use the stream method. What we need to do is define a class for handling streaming events and pass it to the event handler parameter, which we do like this. As you can see, the first example requires six steps to get the assistant answer. The second example requires five steps to get the assistant answer. And the third example requires four steps to get the assistant answer. What's also cool is that the response streaming not only requires the least code than the manual response polling or response polling using a helper, but also delivers the best UX. You'll see what I mean shortly. Let's run all three Python examples. First, the manual response polling example. As you can see, I'm using the customer support chatbot that we built in the past. I want to attach one file as a knowledge base for our customer support chatbot and use the file search tool. Now we can chat. Let's ask what we can buy in the online store. The loading spinner is shown as long as we don't get the assistant answer. Here you go. Now, let's quit this chat. Second, the response polling example using a helper. Same thing here, we use the customer support chatbot with one file and the file search tool. From the UX perspective, the first two examples are visually identical. The difference is, as we figured out, in the first example we implemented polling manually, while in the second example we used OpenAI's polling helper. Here you go. Now, let's quit this chat. Third, the response streaming example using a helper. Again, we use the customer support chatbot with one file and the file search tool. From the UX perspective, this looks and feels way better than the first two examples. Also, ChatGPT shows responses in a streaming and not a polling way too. There's a good reason why. Because the UX is the best. Kaboom. I mean, how awesome is that? That's it. Thanks for watching. If this tutorial was helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe.